In this video, we're going to keep walking down this path of serving Heath and all of that's the shoot that we've been building together and demonstrating the client experience that your clients are going to be able to get to go through and the kind of experience that you're going to be able to get to design and deliver to your clients using Sprout Studio as your secret weapon. So imagine this customer journey so far, you've had the inquiry via the contact form, you booked them, you've gone back and forth with emails, uh, the booking proposal, you created an engagement session, you created a date, you sent an invitation, you've done all these things. And let's now kind of fast track and pretend now that you have shot the wedding. You've photographed the wedding um, and you're now ready to upload the files to the wedding and you want to now serve and give them all the options, give them all the collections and let them purchase from you and go on from there. So this lesson, we're gonna walk through adding another gallery. I know that we did it in a previous video uh, in a simple way using the engagement session as the gallery. We're gonna now do the same thing, but for the wedding gallery and get a little bit more nuanced with it. So let's hop in. I have Heath and Olive pulled up here. And uh, again, like we did last time, we're gonna go ahead and open up the gallery section here and we're going to add a new gallery and say Heath and Olive wedding. And let's go ahead and click add gallery. Now, similar to how we did it in the last video with the last gallery, we're gonna go ahead now and upload the files here. And there we go. And similar to how we did it in the last video, again, if you wanna just come on in here and check on the progress of your uploads, you can, but also you can always click back and minimize it and keep working within Sprout in the meantime. One of the things that we're gonna go through and take a look at here while the upload's happening there is we're gonna go into settings and we're gonna open up the price list. We've kind of worked a fair bit with the price list throughout Sprout School. This is the price list that we've been working with the whole time. Again, if you remember, we've got all these products and we have all these services and we have our packages all set up here. We have prints and we have all these options and we've gone in here and we've configured the visualizer and played around with all of that. So all of that is in a good state. And in a previous lesson in Sprout School here, we also went through and configured the shop. And I've taken that now a step further and I've gone into custom mode here and I've rearranged the shop the way that I want it to be designed. And I wanted to show this to you here in this video because we're going to show this and look at this on the front end in the gallery as well once we're done uploading. So this is what we have the shop configured to look like. I'm gonna go ahead and save and close out of that for now. And we're gonna go back into the gallery uh, and just kind of wait for the gallery to finish uploading. So I'm gonna go back into here and I'm actually gonna go through it, um, go to it through from this page. Uh, but again, you can uh, see that this is the Heath and Olive Wedding Gallery. It's attached to the shoot, Heath and Olive Wedding. By default, the expiry is February 9th. Again, if you remember, if we go back into settings and then into account and preferences, you can set your default expiration here to be whatever you'd like. So I've got this here for 14 days. Of course, you can override it on a gallery by gallery basis, but I've got that set to 14 days and that's why that gallery was set to expire when it is. So go back into here. And uh, again, it's just of type gallery and it's currently in draft status. Now, a few things that you can do from here is you can uh, preview the gallery if you'd like to. You can open up the settings modal. We talked about that in a previous video. You can extend the expiration date you can set one, so you can manually go ahead and set that up. You can add it or remove it from your catalog, uh, or you could trash it. Now you can do a lot of those things also in bulk. So if you were to select these and do it this way, you can in bulk extend expiration, set expiration, or uh, trash that as well. So I'm gonna go into the gallery here. Uh, it's still saying upload in progress. If I upload or open this up here, we can see that we're at 148 images there and going and it's going fast. But again, through the magic of editing, we're gonna go ahead and speed this up. And now that the gallery is finished uploading, we're gonna go ahead and click View Gallery. And then back over here in the gallery, we're gonna click the Reload button. So we can see that all of the photos have been uploaded here into the gallery and we're good to go. What we're gonna do now is we're going to arrange them so that it's not just one large collection of a few hundred images for our client, but instead we're gonna organize them into what we call in Sprout collections. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of them and then grab the end here. Now this is all 
the um, olive prep. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm going to say copy to new collection. I'm gonna create a new collection here called olive prep and I'm gonna go ahead and copy into that. And then I'm gonna go into this one here and we're gonna grab those and bring those into another collection called Heath Prep. Moving on, I'm gonna grab this one and go all the way down here to where the end of first look is. Let's wrap up right there. Copy to collection, make a new collection called first look. And then we're gonna keep going here and just make collections where appropriate. Now, one of the things that I did intentionally here is I left some of the images not in a collection down here. And the reason I did that is because I wanna go on up here and show a tool that we have built into Sprout here. If I click up here, this allows you to navigate between the collections if you wanna work within them here in the back end. But we have this folder here that says photos not in a collection. So that's a really useful tool for you to click into and realize which images you haven't added to a collection yet. So now I can go ahead and grab these ones and bring them over into a collection. Now I've been right clicking and doing it all this way. You can also grab one here, grab all those, and then actually drag up here, and then drag into the new collection section there, and then drop there, and it's gonna do the exact same thing. So now I can call this dancing. So now that I've done that, again, you can see photos not in a collection, there's nothing in there. So if I go back to all photos, there's everything, but now I can also navigate between each one of these collections and work with the collections individually. And the first thing that I wanna do is set the collection cover. So if I click into here, you can see here little thumbnails. By default, this is gonna choose one of the images in the collection, but I'm gonna go ahead and customize that to choose an image that I want for it because the client will see those collections when they first go into the gallery, and I wanna be able to customize that with a little bit more granularity. So I'm going to select some images here uh, that I would like to use for those images. Let's maybe just start with one here and I'm gonna grab one of these right there. And I'm gonna go uh, set as collection cover right here. So I'm gonna click that. And then again, uh, similar to how we did it in the last gallery, we have to set the focal point crop, which is where you want the most important part to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And now I'm just gonna go through every single one of the other collections and do the exact same thing. Okay, and there we go. So I've got all the collection covers set for those. Um, just a quick note that if you wanted to reorder those, if you had put those in the wrong order, you can always click reorder there and drag and drop them around. And the other thing that you can also do is if you click edit here, you can edit the name of it. So for example, if I wanted that not to be Heath and Olive Portraits, but just be Portraits, I can go ahead and click save and then it updates there. So now that we've got all of that set, the last thing that I wanna do is just change what the featured image is. So similar to how we did it for the um, collection covers, I'm just gonna go down, grab an image, and set that there. So I'm going to use this one, I like that one. I'm gonna go featured image. It's gonna ask me to crop with the focal point cropper. And there we are. So at this point, uh, the gallery is in an almost ready to publish state. I'm just gonna go into settings here and take a look around and make sure that everything in here is set up the way that I want it to be set up. So I have uh, on catalog off, placeholder off, email off. There's no message template. Uh, we walked through a lot of these in that last video as well. Cover style split. Maybe I'll take a few moments um, in uh, in another video and run through making the, um, the custom cover so we can kind of double back into that. So I'm gonna leave that one at split for now. Um, I'm gonna go into masonry. I'm gonna keep it as masonry. No, I'm gonna go into waterfall, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna keep Ken Burns effect. We're gonna go uh, light theme, no watermark, turn off social. I wanna leave the all photos. So this is where you could choose to start in a specific collection if you'd like to. Maybe for example, you had one that was called favorites and you want them to always start in that collection. So you could do that or you could just drop them into the collection chooser and do that. So you have the ability to do that. 
um, underselling. This is now what we're going to do a little bit different from the last um, gallery. I'm going to choose a price list. Uh, I'm going to specify my tax. I'm going to turn on whatever payment methods I'd like to have turned on. Those are whatever you have set by default. So you can just uncheck whatever ones you don't want to have there. And then same with shipping methods. You can set up whatever kinds of shipping methods that you'd like to have. I've just got pickup chosen here. And then you can have whether you want to allow or not allow coupons in the gallery. I'll leave that one on. And I'm going to leave the downloads uh, just sort of alone for now on this one. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll choose the same one that we set up before. So we have it set up like that. So with that, I'm going to now go ahead and publish the gallery. So I'm going to click done editing. And now this opens up this little window here to prompt me to send the email. If I click write the email, then it's going to use my default email here. Uh, and I can go ahead and press send. And now the gallery is live. Now that we've published the gallery, we're going to go ahead and click the view button up here to see what it looks like from your client's perspective. And there we go. So this is that split cover that we talked about. And of course, you're welcome to, to tweak that if you'd like and change to a different one if you would prefer. Uh, we can also custom design your own cover. And we'll again walk through that in a later video here on Sprout School. Uh, but for now, this is what I have set. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open Gallery. And this is now where you can see um, how spending a little bit of time in choosing the right images for your collection covers makes sense. Because now this looks really beautiful. It looks really nice and consistent. By having those focal points set properly, um, the images are going to be cropped properly. It's all going to look really nice and beautiful and consistent. And by the way, there's that view all photos button. If I just go back into the gallery here, uh, if I open up the settings for a quick moment and go into uh, advanced right here, there is this all photos toggle. And again, you can always click these to understand better what this thing is doing. But if you turned that off right there, then this view all photos button wouldn't be there. They'd only be able to go into collections. So there would be no option for them to view all photos. But I leave it on because I like the idea of giving them the option to uh, go into a specific uh, or go into all photos, sorry. So now again, as the client, if I go in here to view all photos, this is now what the client gallery looks like. And I can just browse through here. I can scroll down. Of course, I can click into any of these images to view that one bigger. And I can swipe between them here. Or I can press the X to leave here to go back to the thumbnails. And then if I want to go back to the main menu here to go all, to all collections, I could go into it here and maybe just go into portraits, for example, and then view the portraits here and they'll load in and I'm able to do that here. Now, the one thing that we didn't highlight and talk about uh, in the last video or the last course here uh, about um, galleries was the slideshow. So let's go ahead and just look at what the slideshow looks like here um, in this gallery. So you can see here, this is a beautiful, um, full resolution, high resolution. Uh, this is that Ken Burns effect gallery that we talked about or slideshow where it's full screen. It has the crossfade and it zooms in and it zooms out. And it's very subtle and very beautiful. And this is all on the web. So this is all just a beautiful experience that you can give your clients here on the web. And of course, they can always pause it if they want to sort of pause and spend some more time on an image. Uh, they can get out of full screen mode or they can just leave altogether. So this is the slideshow that's automatically built for you in all of your galleries if you turn it on. Um, in this specific example, I was doing it just from a collection, so it's only gonna show images in that collection, but of course your clients could do it from the all photos section as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click X on that to leave the slideshow and go back into the main part here, and we're going to leave even here and go back over here. The last thing that I wanna show in here is the ordering. So if we click the order button, right here. This will now show the different options that you have in your price list that require a single image. So I'm just going to, for a moment, jump back over here into the back end of Sprout. I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go into my price list. And if I open up my price list here, by default, photo or uh, prints, I'm sorry, will always only require a single image. So I've got photo print, fine art print, framed print, canvas gallery wrap. If I go back into my gallery here, you can see there's those four prints right there. So those will always show up here when I choose to order a single image. However, anything else, for example, digital files uh, will show up. So you see I've got a single image right here. And if I go back here, 
This is the archival digital file, single image, so that's that one there. And then any other products or services that require a single photo will show up there as well. So if I click engagement book, for example, we had set this up in a previous lesson to require 15 to 20 images. So engagement book will not show up over here because it requires 15 to 20 images. So if I'm clicking to order this one picture, there's obviously no way for me to order an engagement book of that one picture, so it's not gonna show up. However, press printed cards we have set up to be a single photo. So you can buy this for one single photo. So because of that, when I click buy, there is the option to choose press printed cards. I can click that, I can change my quantity, and I can purchase that if I'd like to. Uh, otherwise, if I go into framed prints here, this is now where Visualizer starts to show off. And again, if I just flip back over here into my price list and open up the framed print here and open up styling and design, this is now mirroring what we're seeing here on the front end. Obviously, the difference is that back over here, it's just showing you a preview uh, with just our sort of sample images over here. But in the actual gallery, it shows the client's actual image that they've chosen here. Now the client can click crop. They can adjust this. They cannot zoom it in, so there's no option for them to get closer, uh, but they can adjust the crop there for the specific image, and then they can also rotate it if they want to see it rotate in a different orientation, and then adjust the crop like that if they'd like to. So they do have a little bit of control there, but of course you can tweak that in the back end. Then they have the option of choosing different sizes here as well, and then is also previewing what this looks like with different kinds of framing, different kinds of matting based on how you have that all set up there, and as you can tell actually up here, the price adjusts based on what you are choosing here, if I choose Nomad. So that's all set up if I go just back over here and then go pricing and setup. So this is where all that's set up by having a black frame with slim matting, it's 125, black frame with wide matting is 135. So if I go back over here and go black frame, five by seven slim, there's 125, wide is 135. So that's where you can adjust your prices based on what you're looking to do. And then from there, your client can click add to cart and then it adds it to their cart. And then of course they can either keep shopping or finalize their order. Now, if I leave there and then go into the shop in the top right corner, that's where everything will show up. So this is where we can run through and walk through uh, what we talked about previously in the, if I go back into my price list here and then leave here and then go into my edit shop layout, this will now uh, show up all of these information, all of these details, the way that we have them designed here. This will now show up here in the gallery in the shop. So if I scroll through here, this now allows me to view the shop. And it's going to use the images that I have in the gallery for this client as these preview images just so the shop feels a little bit more customized for this client. So as I scroll around here, you can see how this looks and how beautiful this looks. And for things that even like uh, the print collections, so if I click into this, this now lets the client choose the images that you've specified in that package for each one of them. So they could click into this and then go ahead and choose the print that they'd want for that. So they can kind of filter through here, look for what they're looking for, grab that, make sure that they're happy with it, and then go ahead and add that to the package and they can see they're added to the package. So if you build these packages of prints and your clients will now be able to go through and specify what images they want and then go ahead and purchase those packages. And so that is how the shop works uh, here in uh, a gallery. And if I just kind of go back over here to the gallery and then even go back here to the collection chooser, we'll kind of reset back to the beginning. That is how galleries and shop and purchasing images and prints in a gallery works in Sprout Studio. A uh, bit of a lengthy video there, but I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you can see how beautiful your work can look for your clients from your client's perspective in a gallery and in your shop.